Well, this weekend, Dateline Schools, we're talking about good school attendance being tomorrow is count day here in Michigan. And to give us some tips and some suggestions on how important school attendance is every day, we have the opportunity of talking with the executive director from Attendance Works from San Francisco, Hetty Chang. And, and Hetty, yesterday you used a couple of terms that I think are real important for people to know, chronic absences. Hit on that again a little bit. Can you redefine that for us? What do you mean by chronic absence? Broadly defined, chronic absence is missing so much school that a child is academically at risk. But we recommend defining it as missing 10% of the school year for any reason, excused, unexcused suspensions. If we think what happens in the classroom matters, then when kids aren't in the classroom, it matters as well. We also define it as 10% because we want folks to notice when kids miss two days in the first month of school, four days in the second month of school, six days, because if you notice it early on, not at day 17 and go, oh my God, the kids missed 17 days, I better do something. By day 17, you know, preventing them making the 18th day is, is good, but it's not that helpful. What's really most helpful is that you notice it as soon as it starts to happen. And then you're helping children make up for the lost instructional time, get back to school, resolve the barriers they face. And that's what's going to prevent a need for more extensive remediation later on. Do you find that this too is more of a, a community problem or is it more of a, a school problem? I actually think we have to look at both. The causes of absence we see we kind of have four different buckets for why kids might miss school. And by the way, the key to coming up with solutions is understanding what the causes are. So the first bucket I would say are barriers. And these tend to be things that we think of as more in the community, you know, poor transportation, lack of access to health care, unsafe um, walking to school, um, you know, challenging financial and economic conditions. The second bucket, though, um, is actually... Um, aversion where kids are being pushed out of school. That could be for ineffective disciplinary um, uh, uh, practices that actually make kids not feel wanted, not feel engaged. It also um, can be that parents had really awful experiences in school. Uh, if you think about, for example, Native Americans, of which you have a large population in Michigan, you know, their history with schools where schools were used to um, uh, make sure that they assimilated to mainstream and to tear them away from their cultural and linguistic roots. Uh, they had a whole system of boarding schools. And so you'd actually have to shift that dynamic uh, for school not to be a place where families maybe fear or don't want, or the kids don't want to be in. The third bucket is um, lack of engagement. Kids aren't feeling connected to their peers. They're not finding curriculum as engaging. Uh, and the fourth bucket is actually a lot of misconceptions. Um, this may be where we've had some of the easier wins. Um, families just don't understand missing two days a month is a challenge. They don't even know that they miss two days a month because they're not recognizing how all the absences are adding up. They might not think, recognize, particularly in the younger grades, that preschool and kindergarten um, attendance really matters. Or like you have the high school junior or senior is like, ah, I can miss a couple of days of chemistry and I'll be okay when it's really not quite true because education is actually scaffolded. We'll be back with more tomorrow for Dateline Schools, Ontario.